Welcome to our show and thanks for listening. We have Valentine's Day coming up real fast, and I believe it is important to include all of our family members in respect and appreciation for sweethearts. After all, a home is not really a home without our pets. So today, our show is about Valentine dogs, how important they are to our well-being, dogs who are always ready to give us a greet and something to laugh about even when the whole world is frowning. On our show this morning, I have a young lady who is very familiar with dogs, works with them every day, and may be more successful in making them mind than children. Let's welcome to the show an animal behaviorist, a dog lover, one of Rover's best independent contractors in Las Vegas, and an all-around animal enthusiast, Brittany Inoue. Welcome to the show, Brittany. Hello. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's uh, certainly my pleasure. Before the show, we spoke of your love for animals and how becoming a veterinarian was your original target in college. What about that? What changed your mind? Well, chemistry, for one, was very difficult for me to wrap my mind around. And also, I had had the experience with a, an aggressive dog that really got me thinking about how how dogs behave, why they do the things they do, and what can we do to help dogs live their best lives and be safe. Ah, so you went from veterinarian to what? Human psychology? Oh, that's going human psychology. Worst to yep, worst. At right? UC Davis. Yep. Oh. And I thought, hey, you know, it's similar as dogs and it's a little more intriguing because anim you know, humans are more complex than dogs. And I did that for quite a while. And you aspired to what level with that? So I have my uh, master's in clinical social work, and then I have my licensed um, MSW here in Nevada. In Nevada. So you've been with humans trying to figure out what they're thinking from time to time. And didn't you work with children for a number of years? I, and still I do? did for, for close to 20 years, worked with families and children in home-based settings for quite a while. It's a little bit different than dogs, right? So now you yes, have a little, little more frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a passion for dogs, I can see. And is it because mm -hmm. they cannot talk back the way that uh, uh, people and children do all the time? Is that really part of your reason for one of these little sweethearts that you like uh, as opposed to children, it's, maybe? It's a little more simple in my mind with animals and they're always talking. You just have to look with your eyes instead of just listening with your ears and just how dogs think and how they move and what they're trying to communicate to me is a lot simpler than trying to work with families and reach goals and uh, juggle all the different outside forces that seem to be against many families trying to just make their way in the world. With with dogs, you're you're more on a um, you know cutting edge kind of of uh, endeavor to make the dogs behave in the way that you want, have them become um, great members of your family. So you gravitated back to animals, especially puppies and dogs, but mostly focused on animal behavior. And is mm -hmm. that not right? Is it just because yeah. it's and less animal frustrating? care. Yeah, less frustrating, and um, you get you know, financially compensated for it appropriately. And like I said, you're not, you know, um, you know, it's really hard for a lot of families to let somebody into their home and then feel like somebody who is not part of the family is trying to tell them what to do or guide them. Whereas with a, an animal, it is emotional, but a lot of times it's, it's, there's a, there's not so much ego involved mm. that there is when you're working with a child. So, um, it, it the everyone has the same priority which is the safety and the well-being of an animal versus when you're working with a child there's you know the parents expectations the school's expectations the world's expectations and um the kids abilities so dogs is just a little bit simpler and you like that yeah mm -hmm. i like the fact that dogs just don't normally talk back to you too much the way children do you know but uh, can you name that's a few, true 
<laughs> Can you name a few animal behaviorists that are real popular out there that you like their work and helping animals behave uh, and be yeah. great family dogs or mm -hmm. whether or not they're protection dogs, uh, wh whatever. Do you know a few of yeah. those? Well, the, well the main one, the main individual that is here in Las Vegas that I've communicated with quite a few times on cases um, is his name is Antonio Diaz and he runs a program called Leader of the Pack. And um, he's actually on Instagram and he's on a, a lot of different places. And um, his approach to working with animals and being a leader for your animal, but also, you know, not just um, being cavalier with that relationship, but but utilizing your leadership status to um, give your dog the best life possible. And he's a big proponent of like exercise, you know, nutrition, but also, um, you know, dogs don't get to live you know a free lunch lifestyle they 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 have a role in your family and um, a lot of times we see discrepancies in behavior because a dog um, doesn't have a job and a dog is always looking for where they are in a pack and what they're supposed to be doing just like anyone in a family um, mm. you know and if you have just one freeloader in the family it it, it makes things complicated and kind of changes the dynamics between the different people in the family in my family, we have um, Harley. I've mentioned him on the mm -hmm. air more than once, a German Shepherd. He is uh, the cross between a, a great family dog and a great protection dog. Mm -hmm. When he walks with the wife, you know, he protects her like there's no tomorrow and not any other dogs. Anybody gets around her. Whereas mm -hmm. with me, he, he doesn't care what, what happens to me, but I notice their behavior at nighttime. He will lay down beside me and he'll be there for a while. And then he'll go and he'll be on the other side where, you know, mama is, and then he'll go by the door. He moves constantly mm -hmm. around the room to yep. provide protection. But when the, the sun is up and everything else, his, his level of guard, guarding it goes way down it's really mm -hmm. fascinating to watch this this pup well he's not really a pup but acts like a pup a lot uh, <laughs> and he do his job but he's a he's a cross in behavior between his natural instinct of being a guard dog and being a family dog and it's it's really amazing to to yeah. watch them do that any comments on that yeah it's it's actually fascinating because i feel like in the dog world there's a split between dogs used for protection or work dogs, you know, like you think of Belgian Malinois, you think of, um, you know, Border Collies, the dogs that are working. And then you have this whole other realm of like, well, we just want our dog part of our family. We want them to accept the people we bring into our home. Um, and I think I've got like with, with my dog, Maisie, I think I have a wonderful cross between that because she has very intimidating bark. Um, and I can guarantee you if, if somebody approaches our kids with malintent, she lets them know that's not okay. However, when we let her know, hey, you got to relax, it, you know, these are friends, you know, she's like, oh, okay. Like, all right, mom and dad are on it. I got it. Um, Isn't that and amazing? I always talk about a situation where I had my daughter on one side and Maisie on the other side, and we were walking at a rest stop and these two guys started to walk towards us and Maisie didn't bark, growl, snarl or anything. She just planted herself and stared at them like, just try. And I don't know what she was picking up on. She's never done that since it's been four years, but I knew in my gut and my soul that those two individuals had bad intent and she picked up on it and she was steadfast and they understood her behavior and took about 15 feet to walk the other direction to get to their car um, just to avoid us. And like I said, she wasn't barking, snarling, doing anything that anyone would say was aggressive, but her body language was very clear that she wasn't gonna let anyone come near us. So wow. it's it's really cool. There for a short while I was doing uh, radio commercials for this protection dog uh, company and they would actually raise the dogs to become serious protectors of VIP type people uh, mm. athletes professional athletes and so forth but it seemed like yeah. their approach as you pointed out is just totally different than somebody like uh, what's the, the fancy guy's name uh, Caesar the Caesar Milan See, this is Milan. He's yeah. well known, and but he basically works the other side of the road to where he he trains dogs to uh, be good family dogs. Is that not right? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Because 
you have to like when you go to pick up an animal a pet choose a pet whether you're going to an ethical breeder you're going to your shelter the things you need to ask is what is my daily life going to look like what is the likelihood you know do i live in an area that has a lot of break-ins do i live do i have to walk in areas that are not so safe or do i like to have a lot of parties and have people come over do i am i an aunt or an uncle with a lot of kids coming over like you have to think about that those what your daily life is going to look at and then look like and do your research on what type of dog that would best um, be that because if you're in an apartment and you have a great Pyrenees it's not going to be a good time like that dog <laughs> needs land and needs a job it needs something to protect and if you don't give it the appropriate thing to protect like a herd or little animals it's going to think that it needs to protect the whole block and then you get some some questionable behaviors we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Real Estate Minute with REMAX expert, Michael Hatfield. Michael, tell us about home inspections. Inspections are key elements in the home buying process. Professional inspectors determine the condition of a property. If a problem arises in an inspection, your agent guides you with solutions to keep your deal intact. Who pays the expense of doing an inspection? Sellers often conduct pre-market inspections before placing their home on the market. Most buyers get their own inspections when in contract. Whoever orders this service typically pays for it. If repairs are needed, repair costs may be negotiated. Does experience help with inspection issues? The more experience an agent has, the better he is able to solve inspection problems for you. Call 925-322-7775 now to schedule an appointment or complimentary home analysis. For excellence in real estate, call the Michael Hatfield REMAX team at 925-322-7775 or go to michaelhatfieldhomes.com. Now back to our show. Have you ever mm -hmm. thought about using your education, your experience to become uh, more of a, uh, maybe an internet uh, resource for people trying to raise their dogs? It seems like that you, you know, a person has a question, you're the perfect authority to ask. So if you, I, I know this is done already, but it seemed like you would definitely want to do that, uh, especially down in your area, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, a lot of uh, people would love to have those resources. And the reason I say this is just recently, our shepherd pulled his cruciate ligament. And that is, uh, if they have the surgery, it's about 16 weeks of recovery. Yeah. That means the dog can't go upstairs, downstairs, got to be somewhat immobile. And people mm -hmm. need some type of reference for that. Well, yes, you can get information online, but it's like going to Google to learn how to fly a, a Boeing. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's all over. It's just too much information. It seemed like you could be a really great resource in that area. Have you ever thought of that? I have. I've flirted with that idea before. And I think, especially since like COVID and all of that, my focus has been much more inward to my family, um, especially because I have younger kiddos. You know, it's there's a, a lot of changing information out there. So it's hard for me sometimes, you know, I've the information, the medical standpoint with a lot of animals has changed since I worked at a vet you know, 20 something years ago. So it is hard to kind of keep up. And like you said, you, you Google something or you research something and there's 15 different viewpoints. And it's like, I just wanted to know when I was supposed to spay or neuter my animal. Like when I was growing up, you always spayed, you know, at six months, you neutered at six months, but now there's all this other data that shows that by doing that, you can actually prevent their bones from um, maturing in, in a correct way. But then if you don't neuter them, a boy dog, fast enough they get into the habit of marking or they can slip out of your yard and inadvertently get another dog pregnant so it's it's a lot of a lot of changing pieces so i feel like even though i've been doing this a while i feel like i'm i still have a lot to learn ah uh, don't we all <laughs> yeah. don't we all well you have a lot of education you considered writing a novel not a novel, but a, a you know, book, my dad has talked about this a lot. <laughs> reference. Uh, I just think that you would do a really great job. You're very uh, articulate. You you could provide something, and I think if you provide a really good resource, a good reference, 
And even if you wanted to change it a little bit to a novel type side, that it would be very effective. You could work on it a little bit here and yeah. there as as you do your current duties. Now, your current duties involve uh, working with a company called uh, Rover, I believe. Mm -hmm. What do you do yeah, so with Rover? Rover? So Rover, um, a lot of people have misconceptions of Rover. And I like to explain it. It's just like if you call an Uber, you can have different experiences with different drivers. The same on Rover. Rover is um, not my employer, but it is a platform where independent contractors post their um, prices and their services. And then you can connect with a Rover sitter in your area. Um, so I utilize Rover. I have a lot of clients on Rover and I have a lot of clients that have come to us through the doodle groups here in Las Vegas because I have two doodles. So what I utilize Rover for is to connect with other cl with clients and also I'm able to list my my prices and it calculates everything for me. It's very handy. It's, it's been a really interesting ride. I've learned a lot working as an independent contractor and I really appreciate utilizing the platform to get to know a lot of new people and their dogs and cats. What do you like about dogs? What do you like about puppies? I mean, are they not sweethearts, generally speaking? They are. They yeah. are. Um, are your family? They are. And I think it's because there's very few dogs that you're going to meet. And cats, too. I love both. Um, that have malintent. They're, they're not trying to ruin your day. They're not going to lie to you. They're not going to, if they hurt you, it, there's a reason behind it. It's not, it's not from a, an, like an evil or uh tricky standpoint, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think I, there's a level of authenticity with an animal. And something I learned when I was pretty young is that animals are a reflection of you. So if you find an animal challenging, there's most likely an element that's related to something you need to work through. Right. So I had I got my first small dog um, four years ago. Her name's Abby, and it, I went through a little bit of a panic phase because she was so small, and I was constantly worried about stepping on her or she'd get lost. But I I am a big dog girl. Like I I love my my Maisie. I love them both. But there's something about just hugging a big dog that's that's really nice. Give them a little thump on the on the back. The first question I have is, you know, each type of dog tends to have its own personality. Larger yes. dogs have uh, one type of personality and smaller dogs are a different type of little Valentines. What, what do you mm -hmm. like? What's your preference with uh, larger or smaller dogs and personalities that you see from them? So I've always been a big dog person um, because I like, I like the idea of being able to hike or move or go wherever and not worry about my dog getting like stepped on or any of the things that come with having a small dog. Um, I also just love when my big dog, you know, wants to cuddle and I can just, just like, she's got substance. Um, but I did get my, my Abby, she's a small, she's a Cavapoo and it was a, she's my first small dog and it took an adjustment and my husband has always had small dogs. So he's used to that. Um, but I do love having both. I love that, you know, Abby can crawl up literally in my lap. She, and it doesn't even feel like she's there. She's like 20 pounds. And then Maisie, she also tries to curl up in my lap. Um, she is not as successful because she's almost 70 pounds. So it's, um, and she's got very long legs, but she truly believes she should be able to fit in my lap like her little sister. So sometimes I can't breathe because they're both trying to sit on me. Wow. You know, each breed has different characteristics. We've noticed over the years that we take them and we go through the standard type training, but the traits of each breed tend to be different. With shepherds, yes. we, we touched on it earlier about how shepherds have this guardian instinct. It's yeah. it's part yep. of their DNA. It's, it's how they're brought. Have you noticed those with some of the dogs you watch? The different yeah, uh, so, personalities? Yeah. Um, yeah and like there's one client that i take care of they have a multitude of little dogs and they're all the same breed chihuahua they it's funny because they literally walk through life believing that they're the size of a doberman and they have that strut and then you know one of them she's just the sweetest little thing and she just like i want to put her in my pocket 
but I can't because she's not mine. Um, but the, there's one, and he is a German shepherd in this in the body of a Chihuahua, and he it is his duty to take care of his pack. And even though he's technically the smallest of them, that's his job. Um, but I've heard that with Chihuahuas, they're very protective. But yeah, it's it is interesting doing pet sitting. I'm I'm opened up to a whole world of dog breeds that I you know maybe didn't have experience with. I got to say, if you're looking for a dog, a yellow lab or a white lab is honestly the best dog for people that just want to go with the flow dog, a beginner dog. Every white lab or yellow lab I've cared for is just got a heart of gold. It They just roll with whatever, whatever environment, whoever's taking care of them. They're like, eh, just give me a little love. Give me a little food. Give me a little cuddle. I'm good. <laughs> Better so. than kids for a Valentine, right? Yeah. <laughs> a week or so back, we had uh, Dr. Armand Baboud. He's the owner and proprietor of Oak Tree Animal Hospital. Really great guy. But you know what became apparent to me is that as I was talking with him, what he does is very important to what you do and vice versa, but they're two distinct uh, endeavors. You know, you work with the behavioral side of things where he works with the medical side of things, two distinct uh, areas of endeavor. And I never thought that they were so diverse in, in yeah. uh, application. Do you, do you find that often or do you never see that yeah, because I do. you're so and good a behaviorist? Like, and I, and I feel like so much is con just like humans, right? So much of our behavior, if we're not feeling good or we have an ouchie, we're going to act different. We're going to move different. Um, it, and it, and it, as a caregiver for animals, knowing if they're go, if an animal's having any medical situations going on is important because it changes the care you provide. Also your expectation of how they're going to act. If I have a dog come in that's going to stay with us in our home and, you know, they just had surgery a week ago, a minor surgery, I, I'm going to treat that dog differently. And my expectation for that dog behaving in my home is going to be a little bit different. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Michael, what traits should we look for in selecting an agent? Look for a deal maker with a positive attitude who will work tirelessly for you. An agent who is adept in multiple offer situations, drafting contracts, marketing and advertising a client's home, is familiar with multiple cultures, experienced in mortgage financing, inspections, and escrow, is a huge asset to his client. What can you do as a plus for clients? Your agent is your eyes and your ears, one who works behind the scenes on your behalf, a great attitude, working well with others, and keeping clients' priorities number one is a given for us. Call 925-322-7775 now to schedule an appointment or complimentary home analysis at 925-322-7775 or go to michaelhatfieldhomes.com. Now, back to our show. You know, most dogs, they attain a level of mental capacity of about a two to three year old person, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a human yep. being. Not That's not to compare a person with, with mm -hmm. a canine, but they attain that level. And if you think of them in that regard, you give it a little extra time, you make the eye mm -hmm. contact, they understand. They, yep. I didn't realize until just recently how much our our German shepherd really understands what's going on. Yeah. He, you know, if you're going to get a hug, he's got to come up. He's, you know, uh, you give, uh, I give Nancy a hug and, and the next thing I know, Harley's got his nose right in there. He wants his, his yep. pets too. It's family just hug. the pack. It's so important. Mm -hmm. Do you have that with your, uh, pack at home? Yes. So, and yeah. considering my youngest is uh, almost four. So that three-year-old level, and then I have, you know, Maisie and Abby, Sometimes I feel like all I'm doing all day is managing a pack of three-year-olds because <laughs> the trouble that they get into, not really trouble, but, you know, just what they do, the choices that they make, it's just, it's, it's pretty funny. And yes, Maisie's the same way. Abby's the same way. They have to be, um, because and I think they learn from watching us greet one another and then they, it's social learning, right? So they, they learn to imitate or mimic that behavior and they have to be in those hugs too. And 
Um, now, if I just want to hug my husband, I just have to prepare that I'm going to have the boy child, the girl child, and the two dogs all join in for, quote, family <laughs> hug. So you regard your puppies as almost family members and as sweethearts on Valentine's Day yep, coming up. Absolutely. So my question to you is, with being in a long-term involvement with dogs, I'm going to ask you again, mm -hmm. why don't you write a reference book for people that could help them with the raising and the maintaining the discipline of their in-house sweetheart. I think I would love to do that, but I feel like I would need to learn a little bit more. So Brittany, lover of dogs, if you were to describe dogs and their personality and their traits and puppies as sweethearts, certain words come to mind. What words mm -hmm. would those be? Snuggles, <laughs> snuggly, um, affectionate, um, always there for you. You know, even when they just, they fill a role in your life that a human can't. Um, my dog had something to say about that. Um, and they require a lot of work, but you know, just kind of like parenting, it's the best work you'll ever do. And they're unconditional with how they view you and care about you and try to help. Maisie's really big that if any of the kids are crying or if I'm upset, she comes over and sits down and just keeps pawing at you. And sometimes it's annoying because she'll, you know, scratch you, but in her world, in her mind, she's really desperately trying to connect and let you know that she is trying to help. Isn't that amazing? Dogs are our Valentines. If any of you folks mm -hmm. uh, down in Las Vegas need somebody with Rover, you can reach uh, Brittany Inoue, and I imagine she'll find a way to, to help you out. She really knows what she's doing with your Valentine puppies. So with that in mind, I hope you've enjoyed our talk this morning with Mrs. Brittany Inoue, animal behaviorist, animal lover, rover contractor, and all-around knowledgeable dog person. Thank you, Brittany, for being on the show. After all, our dogs are sweethearts, too. They are. It's time for a short break. You've been listening to Real Estate and More. Interesting people like Brittany, topics of the day like our Valentine dogs, and of course, real estate. Listen to archive real estate and more shows at michaelhatfieldhomes.com slash radio. The Real Estate and More show is now podcast on demand on Spotify, Amazon, Apple, iHeart, Pandora, and most major podcast platforms as well. I'm your host, Michael Hatfield. We'll be right back with our next special guest. Stay tuned.